<laughs> Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Educator Innovation Week. My name is Jarnay Armand. I'm head of Educator Innovation at Flipgrid. And first and foremost, I just want to thank you for taking the time out today to learn and grow with us. Our mission at Flipgrid is to empower every learner on the planet to share their voice continue our mission in empowering every voice, we know how important it is to have a welcoming and inclusive classroom. So today we have panelists from around the world coming together to talk about this topic. So we'll take a moment to introduce everyone on our panel. And we're starting over in Egypt with our friend Ahmed. Ahmed, come in and say hi to everyone. معكم أحمد نجار هاي أرمن هاي زيدي هاي روبرتو ماريو دونالد هاريو and Ahmed um, tell us a little bit about yourself what do you teach over in Egypt yes أنا مدرس رياضيات في مدرسة الزولو الرسمية اللغات في محافظة اللوسر مصر طبعا معلم خبير معتاد المسلسل وسفير لوكليك and Safir uh, Bonsi, who is Safir Lesot, a great one year board educator, was CC pioneer, and creative educator, certificate author at uh, Book Creator, T4 Education, and EU Code Week Ambassador, and Clever Book Ambassador. Awesome, and we're so happy to have you here lending your voice on this conversation. Our next guest is our friends over in Spain, Mario and Alberto Jerez. <laughs> Hi everyone, how are you doing? First of all, thank you everyone for uh, the invitation to be here today for us. It's such a pleasure to be here kicking up this awesome week, right Mario? Yeah, we are super happy. And as we say, my name is Mario. I'm Alberto. And we are uh, two teachers that actually teach in Utah, but right now we are in Spain, vacation, visiting <laughs> family and friends, but we normally teach in Utah. I teach sixth grade and I teach fifth grade. So basically I do the hard job. I'm Mario, the hard work Mario get my students the following year and enjoy the results, right? <laughs> That's the idea. And as Alberto said, we are super happy to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. All right, and our next friend, all the way from Ohio, our friend Randall Sampson. O-H-I-O. For all my friends out there from Ohio, we all know the champ football season is coming. We're excited to be here. We're a bunch of champs in the classroom. So uh, my name's Randall Sampson. I'm in the Columbus, Ohio area. And it is just an honor to be here with this amazing crew. I can't wait to learn uh, from this team. And uh, one of the things that I do is I work with K-12 institutions. Uh, so all the way from the superintendent's uh, door to the student desk and everything in between, making sure that everything is aligned. Uh, it's a 50 state strategy. So uh, we work with, uh, with schools across the country and our main focus is on closing the achievement gap. All boats will rise once we have this inclusion and access for every student. I love that. That is definitely our mission. And we can't do this mission alone without incredible partners. So I'm so thankful that we once again have an expert in the field who is one of our partners with Worldly EDU, but also a wonderful author as well, uh, Nadine Levitt. Welcome to our conversation today. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's so fantastic to be here. Um, yeah, both with Worldly EDU and with the My Mama Says and the whole SEL curriculum around My Mama Says. Um, we have lots of tips and resources that we can provide for uh, creating inclusive classrooms through uh, 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 DEI. And uh, I'm so happy to be here. So thank you. Awesome. So we're going to bring everybody on screen right now, but I want to tell everyone um, in our audience that we would love for you to engage on social media. We have a Twitter prompt already on Twitter, engage in that, and you have a chance of winning swag. We definitely want to hear from you. So to get our conversation started, we are going to center it around 
the topic of inclusion. Now, we all know that that word inclusion has looked a little different over time in education. I've been in education now for almost 18 years. And when I first started, the word inclusion really centered around academic abilities uh, with students um, and really uh, blending in classrooms with special education and regular education classrooms. So we've seen this word inclusion being used in various ways in education. So what does an inclusion inclusive classroom look like and feel like? Well, for me, anyway, I think it, 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 it's the concept of inclusion is really welcoming to everyone, no matter your physical abilities, what culture you come from, your cultural background, whether you're a, man, a boy or a girl or anything in between, um, whether you're, you have different skills and abilities, it has to be a classroom where the mind and body connection, and it's interesting because Randall talked about sports earlier, and I think sports do a great job of connecting the mind and body really well. You can't be a champion and not have that connection be solid. And the same with learning. You cannot, you want to optimize all students so that they are able to learn. And you do that by making sure that the physical environment and the mental environment is, is optimized for every student, no matter if their physical abilities are different or what they're walking in with, uh, you want to optimize that and make them feel welcome. I love that connection of the mind and the body, because I know as educators, we get so excited to prepare our classrooms, like physically the space, mm -hmm. right? But like mentally, our students' minds need to also be welcomed, right? And and what are some ways that like maybe we can do that, Randall? I know you you do so many incredible things within in your school building, but as you're getting the, the classroom started, how can we connect more so the mind and the body? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's weird that we're talking about the mind and the body. So I have this thing where I tell people all the time, it's not what you say, it's what you do and what I see you doing, right? Uh, so with the mind and the body, I have this process called the six pack. And I'm not talking about my own personal six pack, but we are talking about the six pack. We always talk about the core of your body is like the most important part that holds everything together, so to speak. And we all have to work on that six pack all the time. It's not just a hundred setups before pool season, right? So it's a constant thing all the time. So I have this thing called the six pack where when you walk into a classroom, you see students are doing research. So they're connecting their minds and we're working on the six pack. So it's, it's research, it's persuasive writing, it's a vigorous debate, which is okay. It's graphic organizer using uh, digital graphic organizers, using multimedia presentations in the classroom to exercise that mind. Uh, and then it's about just giving a flat out regular speech ability to talk to people. Um, so those are the six items uh, in the six pack that I really look for in a full inclusive classroom. And I'll tweet, I know I went through that kind of fast, I'll tweet out the graphic for that as well so people can see it and use it. Yeah, so I'm curious, you know, Mario and Alberto are teachers in the classroom and I know they're preparing right now um, for welcoming their students back. So what do you feel um, as far as this question, like what does an inclusive classroom look like and feel like in your environment? I think you're on mute, Mario and Alberto. So let's yeah, try. No, here we go. There we go. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was saying that uh, this is the perfect setting to talk about the student voice. You know, student voice and Flipgrid are, you know, like they blend together. It is perfect. So for me, as well, like uh, um, inclusion should be that every single voice should be heard. You know, every single voice should be important in our classes. It doesn't matter what language they speak, uh, what their, they are, their um, background, religion beliefs, everything. It doesn't matter. Every single voice should be heard. And we need to prepare for that. We need to create that safe environment in our classes that our students feel safe to talk, you know, to express their opinion, like, uh, whatever they, uh, they think or whatever they are thinking in that uh, moment, you know, about a certain topic, it doesn't matter. They need to feel safe, you know, to express their opinion and to feel included in our classes. Communication is so important. Having these discussions around these uh, topics, in what's inclusion, what inclusion looks like. Also, we need to talk about this with our students. And having them like have an opinion on all these topics, giving them a voice, as Mary was saying, is really important. And it is something that we work on every single day in our classes. 
Yeah, you know, the power of voice and empowering students to share their voice. I know Ahmed is uh, another one of our amazing student voice ambassadors. Um, so Ahmed, what are some ways that you're empowering your students to share their voice on day one in the classroom? Yeah. Uh, let me speak in Arabic. Uh, ذلك <تصفيق> وطرق التقديم واستخدام التكنولوجيا والمعلمين المدربين والمتحمسين لعملية التعليم كما أدى ذلك إلى تصميم شامل للتعلم مبني على التنوع والتفرد وتمكن كل شخص من المشاركة في تطوير المهارات لتحقيق الدور الأمثل في المجتمع كما يجب أن تكون مساحة المادية في متناول الجميع من خلال أساس قابل للتحريك بسهولة لتصميم مجموعات متنوعة من جلسات التعلم من جلسات فرضية إلى جلسة جمعية وجلسة عملية كما يجب أن تكون المسافات محددة ومرتبة وذات إضاءة جيدة مع الحد الأدنى من الضوضاء العالية المفاجئة شكرا Thank you. And you know our classrooms are spaces where we invite and offer students to imagine and really encourage them uh, to create a more equitable future, right? And so what we've seen, um, you know, over time as this word inclusion has uh, developed in education is that sometimes students are not uh, included in the classroom in some sense because their knowledge, their skills, their backgrounds have not been in the forefront, right? And so we know um, it's important for students to see themselves in the classroom in some capacity, right? So how might we as educators um, really use the diverse backgrounds and experiences of our scholars to build an equitable and inclusive environment? I think in part, it, it, like the definition of scholars, right, is, is, is interesting here. But I think it's whatever resources we're using and that we're looking toward and that we're referring to um, have to also be diverse. So having, lead, you know, showcasing leadership that, are, that, that, that might be women or from different cultures or have, um, you know, transsexual or, or whatever, allowing whatever is going on in that community is it has to also be visible from the materials that we're use, using to teach. Um, and I think another great way to do this, I mean, I'm always very music based. So I think um, allowing and, and bringing the students in, letting them actually tell us what it, what, what they're bringing in. Right. So for example, allowing, I'm, I like to allow kids to, um, to, to be a part of the welcoming process and sort of saying, okay, well, let's have a, a song uh, as you walk into the classroom every day. And so that can be our com you know, a community thing. And there's different roles that different students have in that. I think giving students a role where their voice is empowered and where they feel like they can add something and contribute is, is really vital because everyone wants to contribute different things. And I think having this song that people can can walk in with and be welcomed by is a piece of that. And that can be a scholar in a weird way. I mean, it might be Dr. Dre, but that's OK. <laughs> that, can be, that can be a scholar, too. Um, you know, it, it doesn't always have to be just in, hey, this is our math textbook and this is what we're going to be doing. So I think that to me, it's about the fabric of every piece of the classroom. Yes. And so like what's really cool is I went and found this topic, Nadine, um, that John Hartman created called The Walk Up Song. Um, I'm trying to share it right now. Let's see if I can make sure to share it. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Looks like sharing is not being my friend at the moment in time. Um, but let's let's see. It's it's literally my mission journey. I, like I, right now, my mission is to try and replace school bells with music because I think you know the an anxiety that is caused by the school bell, like, oh my God, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, and you hurry to your classroom, could totally be avoided by um, by having a welcoming sort of song instead that makes you feel like you're coming home, right? Love uh, it. 
And it's and, and then letting letting seniors or letting kids be a part of like saying, okay, well, em, emotions are contained in music and they make us feel something. So let's let um, students in on like what should our community, what do we want our community to feel when they walk in these doors? Um, I think that's really empowering. And I'll definitely get that topic and we'll put it inside of a collection for everyone to access in our Flipgrid Discovery Library. But Nadine, you gave me a thought. Every educator can send out a Flipgrid topic asking students what would their walk-up song be, right? And let's just say every day a teacher just chooses one of those walk-up songs to play at the start of the class. Just think how beautiful and welcoming that is for that student. They feel like their voice is also heard. It gets them going. Then they learn different genres of music, right? And what other people uh, love. So I absolutely love that. On Worley Edu, actually, we have um, we have lesson plans on that. We all will ha we have all the licensed music that you you can use. It's um, uh, that's clean, which is nice. Um, but if you and you can bring Flipgrid into this as well, because they could also with that music build their own. What does community mean to you? What does what does inclusion mean to you? Right, and and doing videos with that song is kind of that could be a powerful thing too. Awesome. Anyone else want to chime in with some ideas? I love this. Yeah. We used to use that, uh, we used to use that, uh, 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 Freestyle Fridays. Mm -hmm. And this is for like the, I want to say maybe 18 to 20 year teaching veterans plus mm -hmm. who remember the old BET 106 in Park. So every Friday would be Freestyle Friday, uh, on BET, right? So you could do whatever flow you wanted to. So at lunchtime, uh, we would have the kids do Freestyle Friday. So they would dance, they would cheer, they would whatever they had, magic shows, whatever it was, their talent, um, that we didn't even realize that they had because it wasn't part of an elective or a course offering. Uh, so that's Freestyle Friday. But then the beautiful thing came along was this thing called Flipgrid. And now we can use Flipgrid Friday. Uh, so now it's more inclusive. But inside of Flipgrid Friday, we're also very intentional to where every Friday, uh, we have a prompt in there, but the prompt really gets after the kid and the building's culture. Uh, so what do we believe our belief system is about each other in this building and in this classroom? Uh, what do we value? What are our values that we bring to the table? And uh, what behaviors do we display towards each other? Um, so we weave those three components into the Flipgrid Friday, and then the kids all can chime in, faculty can chime in, and we can share it out with each other, obviously. But the number one thing that we also do is we have the championship belt. So those uh, numbers that are really high for Flipgrid Friday, that classroom gets the championship belt for the week. And the interaction and engagement really matters. And so the champs wear the belt around all week long and then they pass them on to the next class. Love that. And you know, I know there's so many educators that are thinking right now too, like how can I diversify my classroom if the physical makeup of students in the classroom might not be as diverse? And I know literature is one way that we can do that. So I'm curious, like Alberto, Mario, uh, Ahmed, if you have any thoughts centered around how to truly bring um, diverse experiences um, to the classroom to also build equity, because as we all know, if students are only um, taught in a certain type of way or have certain types of information and not really taught to critically think and really explore the world. That's why I, I love traveling because you get to expand your mind every time you go to a new place, but we can bring that to our students. So what are some ways that you're bringing that to your students to diversify their experiences? Yeah, like if we are lucky enough to have different students with different backgrounds in our classes, that's priceless. Like having the opportunity for them to share their experiences for example one day we do um something like you cook for the class something typical for your country or you uh, or you teach us a dance and your parents come over and teach us something from your culture that's private having that opportunity is awesome and we have that opportunity we need to take advantage of it and do it in our classes and if we don't have anyone from a different background or different culture we can always use Free grid, um, for example, grid pulse, we can connect with classes around the world to have different perspectives, point of view, to different like ideas on the same topic. 
and show our students that there is not just one reality. There are many realities. The world is so different and different people live in a different way and we need to respect all of them. What Alberto said was super important, like we do global projects because we want our students to realize that there are other ways to live their lives or like other perspectives, you know, like uh, are maybe better than their perspective to solve a problem. You know, like uh, our students sometimes live in that bubble and they think that everyone lives like them. You know, like everyone lives in the same way or think in the same way. So if we can connect our classes with another class on the other side of the, of the planet, on Earth, you know, to come to solve a problem, to collaborate on a project, something like that, that opens our students' minds a lot. And yeah, as Alberto said, it is priceless. Empathy is one of the uh, one of the keys, you know, to develop um, inclusion. Sure. And if you don't want to do it with a class, you can always have a guest speaker. Discovery Library in Flickrid is full of guest speaker, virtual field trips, like activities that you can bring into the classroom to give that, uh, to kind of like foster that empathy that Mario was talking about that is really, really important for the, this like inclusion uh, to happen in the class. Do you, actually, just jumping on, on onto the, I've seen a really, really great example of exactly that using Flipgrid. Uh, what, what, what it was, was having each student research a different culture and bring a different country and they're researching it and then they create a Flipgrid video about that country with like the five top mm -hmm. facts or the 10 top facts and what they learned about that country. Um, and it was such active learning. And, and again, you're empowering voices. It's just really, really high engagement. And it's so, so important. So I think that is a great opportunity also to use Flipgrid for sort of going across borders. And you guys bring up like a good point. Topics such as cooking, dancing, music, those are things that we do in every culture, right? And, and that can bring us together and expand our minds. So I think it's a a safe topic too to get families involved um, to really share out their customs. Um, you know, and when when we really think about it, we're so much more alike um, than different. When you really just stop and have the conversations, you know, about it, which is super beautiful. Um, so I know there's another critical piece to building this inclusive classroom, and that's social and emotional learning. Um, you know, once again, if our students are at a spot where they're not ready to receive uh, the instruction, they're not going to succeed in ways that we would hope. So how does social and emotional learning help to aid in the quest of this inclusive environment for all? And what tips might you have for educators as they start their new school year um, on, on the right foot? Can I take this since we're doing a, just the first bit? Sorry, <laughs> jumping. Um, so we teach, uh, from my mama says, inside me lives a village, we teach all about emotions. It's the very first sort of step. It's the foundational piece of, um, uh, of this. And it's sort of understanding yourself, uh, it's first self-awareness, being able to understand what emotions and how you're feeling, um, but then also being able to manage those and then recognize it in others. And that's when you know the, the social awareness and the relationship skills come in. Um, and even responsible decision making, starting to understand how your words, your actions are perceived by other people and how you can read other people as to what your words and actions, um, how they're taken by other people. So I think what we're really doing with social emotional learning is we're really equipping our students with not just the skills that they need to have difficult conversations, which, by the way, even as adults, like it's difficult to navigate some of these these topics, social justice and so on and so forth. And it's they're not easy conversations to be had, but they're necessary and really important. And so you're you're equipping them with these with these skills, but you're also creating an environment for them with a growth mindset and so on and so forth to um, to be fueling those conversations with curiosity and respect. And I think when you set up your classroom with with those pillars, you're really um, you're setting yourself up for success and, and unity through celebrating uniqueness rather than everyone being the same. I hope that made sense. 
A hundred percent. And I was trying to show off the uh, <laughs> book. So for those who might not know, we have been having these incredible community conversations on Flipgrid. And if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see one where um, Anne is speaking with Nadine all about social and emotional learning and talking about Inside Me Lives a vi Village. And one when I um, listened to that one, it started to make so much sense how our emotions play a critical part in the learning process. So I I really encourage everyone to check that out and further uh, your knowledge. So I would love to hear from anyone else I met if you want to chime in. How does social and emotional learning help aid in the quest for an inclusive environment? Let's see, I think you're muted. Let's try that again. Yes. يعني كيف نستطيع مقارنة الإتاح الجميع دون استثناء في مجال المناهج التعليمية والدراسية هذا يعني دعم الطلاب للتعبير عن أنفسهم والتعلم بطريقة فردية كما يمكن التعامل مع الطلاب مع جميع النقاط والاحتياجات الخاصة بهم وبخاصة الطلاب زي العاقة الخاصة ممكنهم من الوصول إلى نفس المحتوى مثل الطلاب الآخرين ومن ناحية العملية ممكن الوصول إلى المعلومات المختلفة بأهداف كجلسات ووجبات وموارد إضافية والدرجات بنقرة واحدة أو زر واحد على مختلف البرامج والمنصات التعليمية ويسمح ذلك بك يعني ممكن عمل رسوم كرتونية حوارية أو دمج نموذج افتراض الناس Perfect. And, you know, I just want to tell the community right now, this is one way that you can create inclusive environments as well. Ahmed right now is speaking in Arabic and his friends over in Egypt is also responding in, in that environment too. So um, Ahmed, thank you so much for making our programming today uh, inclusive. We truly appreciate that. Um, and our friends, um, uh, Mario and Alberto, they are experts too in SEL. They have created so many topics inside of the Flipgrid Discovery Library that you can use uh, with your scholars to aid in social and emotional learning. So. Um, the E-Twins, share with us, why is this so important and what tips do you have for educators as they start the new school year? I think it is really important for our students and our team um, open your heart, right? Like we always say that we cannot, cannot ask students to do things that we don't do. We cannot teach kindness by yelling at our students because we need to be their role model in our class. So when we are trying to develop the social and emotional learning skills of our students, step number one that we say, and I'm sure you have heard us saying this before, is to open your heart and share with your students how you are feeling that day. For example, you are having a bad day, just tell them, you know what guys i'm having a really tough morning i need you to help me to go through this morning and make it home because i'm just so tired because i'm having personal issues by that you're in a welcoming environment where students are going to follow your example and they are going to open their heart to talk about feelings to develop those skills that are really important. And also we need to keep in mind that we are developing the whole child with this um, approach. We need to focus on all the five areas of social and emotional learning. So we need to uh, kind of navigate those problems and try to kind of hit all those areas. Yeah, and as we were saying before, uh, self-awareness is super important, but social awareness is very important as well. Empathy, you know, like, a, uh, just realize uh, about how the other person is feeling, you know, like uh, and what kind of culture that person comes from. If I can offend that person by doing something special that is very normal uh, for me, you know, you can explain it, uh, you know, kind of to be able to work on that with your students, you know, like uh, how does this culture say hello? You know, I remember just an example, like we connected with a class in Nigeria. And they were explaining to us that, for example, in a specific tribe there, they didn't have doors. And how they knocked on the door was clapping. So that blew my students were like, what the heck? You know, they, like, uh, they were just blow, it blew their mind, you know? So things like that, you know, uh, just starting to realize that 
uh, you know, there are other people in the world that lives in a different way, super, super important. And that is social awareness, you know, just working on that part of social emotional learning. Well, and I'm so glad that you brought up the piece of students uh, doing that work as well. Um, I think for every educator, every day is an opportunity to uh, build inclusive environments. It's not something that you do over the summer or at the beginning of school. It's your choices every day um, as students step inside of the classroom um, to, to welcome them, to make them a part of the learning, a part of the curriculum, uh, a part of the sharing, get your community involved and even outside the community, connecting yeah. with people around the world. So I appreciate everyone for lending your voice today um, during our conversation. I do want to invite the entire community watching to uh, join us for additional panels. So I'm going to try to share my screen again. Uh, hopefully we can see this in a second. But we have a wonderful lineup um, this week for ways that you can prepare uh, to participate in Educator Innovation Month. So um, we have PLCs going on right now, talking about so many different topics, dyslexia, language development strategies, um, a talk to teachers, and also um, we have our panels. So today we just kicked off our week with building inclusive classrooms, but you'll see that we have um, other topics as well this week, best practices for language development tomorrow, we have best practices to make math and science come to life on Wednesday, supporting literacy learning across content areas on Thursday. And Friday, we're wrapping it all up with empowering creativity in the classroom and beyond. And don't forget to check out our 24-hour PD Palooza on July 27th, where we have educators all around the world sharing their brilliance um, on the hour every single Hour. It will be an incredible time. Um, so I'm bringing everybody back. Um, thank you once again. Does anyone have any final words? Randall, I know you're usually a final word kind of guy. So if you want to give our audience uh, some parting words, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Yeah, I just want to say, look, guys, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So make sure your culture is right. Make it tight. Uh, and have the kids fall back in love with learning. Uh, so for the next decade of our teaching career, the only thing that we need to worry about is making sure that the kids are falling back in love with learning. They've been totally disconnected from us and we want them to fall back in love with learning. That is probably the best gift that we can give any kid out there as they propel themselves to their next level. Wow, I love that. Thank yeah. you for that final word. Let's all fall back into learning and we have each other to do that. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.